PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools, how are we all going today? Now the beautiful day on my side of the world. I was mucking around with my new plasma cutter the other day and I went to cut a lump of steel and it started spitting and sparking and doing all sorts of was going bah. You know what the bloody hell's wrong with this? Took me about half an hour to figure out what was wrong with it. Anyway guys, that's what this video is about. Plasma cutters that splutter and do all sorts of horrible stuff. Anyway guys, same as usual, you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below if you've got some better ideas than me. And let's get into it, eh? Now I just came in the workshop the other day guys, just really quickly cut through a lump of plate. I only needed like about three inches of plate. So I turned my old plasma cutter on and just went to cut it and this is what happened. See that guys? Holy moly, I thought to myself, that doesn't sound good. So I changed the consumables. As you can see, I put some new consumables in and it stalls like that. Now, what the bloody hell's going on here? So I checked all my leads here, guys, and this one here was loose. Oh, another tip for you guys. Don't hold on to this here if it hasn't got a plastic cover on it and push the button on your torch at the same time because you'll electrocute yourself. I got a little bit of a tingle before when I did it, so I suggest you don't do it, guys. A lot of these plasma cutters have a plastic thing over here that you can't actually touch it because like I've said to you before this is not only the air lead this is the main power lead for your torch so this has got a wire running all the way up the guts here and the air goes around the outside of it and makes your plasma come out of the torch but it also cools off the wire inside this lead so yeah just bear that in mind guys don't hold on to this and push this at the same time because you might get a nasty surprise <laughs> So anyway guys, like I said, I checked all these, they're all tight, I've moved the earth up even a bit closer, see if that made any difference. What made me think it had something to do with the bloody voltage, is because if you look at this guys, see that there, sputter, splutter, 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 but as soon as I touch it on the steel guys, you watch, it goes to a proper cut again. And if I take it off the steel, it goes again. You watch. See that? I thought to myself, I thought to myself, what the bloody hell's going on here, see? Now, if you watched any of my other videos, guys, you know that I live in New Zealand and we run on 240 volts normally. And why I didn't notice it, guys, was the simple fact that if you look here, we're running at 55 amps and normally if I plug it into a low voltage the amperage automatically turns down like if I go to 110 on my other plasma cutter it'll go from 50 amp to 35 amp and then I know at a glance exactly what voltage I'm cutting with but trick for young players this machine doesn't do that so here's me mucking around in the garage for about an hour trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with this machine and then all of a sudden I realized I had it plugged into the wrong outlet. <laughs> Which made me think, guys, I wonder if these things run properly in the United States when you're, when you're running it on 110 instead of 240. I know a lot of you guys have told me that you've got access to 240, but I just wonder exactly how common it is. Have most workshops got 240? Because I think, personally, well, I don't know, but this is just my theory for what it's worth. These things don't run properly on 110. I don't think they do anyway, but I could be proven wrong. Tell me your experience in the comments below, guys. Anyway, I'll show you. I'll change this to 240, and then you watch how it cuts. So because my voltage is standard 240 here in New Zealand, guys, I use this transformer here. It's a big transformer. It's almost as big as the plasma cutter itself. And if we zoom in there, you can see it's 110. Let's have a look. Pete, can you see it's 110, guys? See that 110 volt? So what I do is I plug my 110 machines in there and see how they perform and then I plug them into 240. But this machine doesn't seem to like it on 110 or 120 at all. Now I don't know if it's something that I'm doing or what it is, but I've never had any trouble with my other machines. So anyway, we'll, we'll change it over 
and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here's my standard 240 volt outlet guys. It's just on a big industrial extension cord. But this is only rated at 15 amps too, by the way. It's 240 volt, 15 amp. Right, so I've been using my transformer. So we'll take it out of the transformer. And we'll get my little adapter here that I made up just for New Zealand. And we'll plug this end into there. And I forgot that I had done a video on 110 volt the other day. Then I come out to do some cutting and that's what happened, guys. So there you go, and then it made me think, well, maybe these things just don't run properly on 110, but I could be proven wrong, because I've been wrong once before. 1977, I think it was, guys. <laughs> right, so here we are. We've got my little contraption here, so we're running directly on 240 now. Chuck that down there, Pete. So we're in the guts, guys. Once again, it's telling me we're doing 55 amps, and that might be correct on 240, but it sure as hell isn't correct on 110. And like I say, this doesn't change like my other machine does. So you don't know at a glance what voltage you're cutting on. Anyway, enough fucking waffle peeps. See if we can cut with it. What do you reckon? Totally different machine, guys. Yeah. So have another go, just to be sure. No problem whatsoever. So there you go guys, that's my tip for the day for what it's worth. Make sure you know what bloody voltage you're running your machines on before you start pulling torches to bits and all sorts of stuff and you've wasted two hours of your life. <laughs> so guys, before you go wasting half your bloody life on changing consumables or mucking around with your torch and checking all your leads and electrocuting yourself and pulling the guts out of your machine, just make sure that you're running it on the right voltage. Like I say, if you've got a choice, run it on 240, 220, 240, because I've, just what I've showed you here is a huge difference. And I don't know if it's because my power supply is different to you guys. That 110, we're not really designed to go on 110, and I have to run it through a transformer. Admittedly, it's a really big transformer, but it might just not have enough guts to get the thing going, if you know what I mean. But if you've got the option, 220, 240 any day of the week. Anyway, that's Pete's moan for the day. Same as usual, guys. You like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. If you want to see a review on this machine, check up here. And if you want to see the first time I ever tried flux core welding, check over there. It's a bit of a laugh, guys. See ya. Bye. Pete's Tools.com.